In last week's video I was working on an adapter that should look more or less like this one. And I stopped doing it because first I wanted to fix a problem that I have here on my lathe. As you can see the setup is still here in place, completely ready to go. But when I move the carriage left and right the whole bed is twisting and it leaves a bit a wavy finish on the part. Now I tried to film it and the camera doesn't pick it up but when I rub with my finger I feel that really this up and down. Wanna feel? So today's plan is to take all this Zwick here apart, lift the saddle off and see if there is something we can do about it. Ah, magnets and chips doesn't mix very well. And here it is. I did nothing around it, I only wiped it off just to pretend I have always clean machines of course. And I found one problem, but not the problem. There is one spot over here that touches the slide of the, the bed. All the other parts of the surface does not touch, which means there is probably a bow in the thing. And when I take a parallel and I hold it here, indeed it sort of hinges right in the middle. When I put my parallel over here, it's nice and stuck over the whole length and also here in the V-grooves. Here normally no problem at all. One problem right here. I think that's already one interesting find. But it doesn't explain why the carriage is moving in a twist movement while using it. Heating system. Oh, shit, 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 shit. When I have a look at these surfaces here, in the V for example, there is almost no wear. So I suppose this machine has been redone once a long time ago, but there's no excessive wear. Of course, this bow in here could be part of the problem. When the apron is installed, that comes of course here, think of it upside down of course, the apron is a heavy piece of equipment and when installed the whole saddle tends to tilt, which means this rail is lifting. And this part with this uh, hook profile here of course prevents the thing from lifting. Now I have to install it with shims between the, these two surfaces to have it more or less exact in height and in, in thickness. But I found out that it's very difficult to find the right shim and now I suppose this is the reason why, because of this bow, the whole thing is wiggling a little bit. What could maybe prevent a little bit the twist this thing ha has is the surface on this side. Think of it like this. 
this surface prevents from lifting upside down so I go down and this surface could maybe prevent it from twisting in theory when I put this uh, hook thing I really don't know how to call it in place right here this should be the same height but it isn't and that's why I put the shims here you can even see the traces where they are they are and this surface is not really nice finish now of course my camera doesn't like to pick up beautiful surfaces but I hope it gives you an idea it's just the lower part and when I keep it in a very slight angle I think this could work The problem is of course this just four holes there's no locating system no uh, screws to adjust also this is gonna be a little bit complicated right let's do things uh, step by step my idea is to strip all this junk that I don't need all of it and install only the saddle on the milling machine and when that's done I can take measurements see how much difference there is here in this height in this surface check if this and this is nice and parallel and all this other stuff and maybe recut this surface but first strip I installed the thing upside down here on my milling machine there's nothing bolted down it's ju just just put it on here that's all and immediately we see that there is a problem the underside which is normally the top side there is of course the dovetail for the cross slide and it is a machined surface so I thought it should be nice to put it flat on this surface but as you see it doesn't work so maybe if I can install some parallels under the dovetail itself without dropping the whole thing on the floor that should be something Which is much better. The thing is now clamped down and I have installed the indicator on the bow surface thing. Zeroed out and it is a disaster. I also checked the front side where the apron comes and here I have a bow of less than one tenth of a millimeter so less than four tau for the imperials and on the back side it is two tenths of a millimeter so a bit over even eight tau and I think that is too much so it could be nice to recut this surface of course these surfaces with the V I'm not gonna touch, uh, I'm gonna leave it as is. There is of course another problem. The reach of this machine is 300 millimeters and my part is 330 millimeters. 
so it will be fly cutter work. To give the thing here a little bit more support I installed a piece of the jack that Gilles made me one day. So Gilles, thanks again. Now why only a piece? Because the complete jack is of course a little bit too big. But whatever, this will work just fine. And I also installed the bigger fly cutter. So I can cut this whole surface in one go. My first idea was to not cut this one. But here comes this uh, hook rail idea system. So it will be much better if this and this is exactly at the same height. So As you can maybe see, I used coolant, which gives me a little better surface finish. And I think it was a good idea. I know you're gonna tell me now that I should scrape this surface in to retain oil. And I'm not gonna do that because I hate hand scraping. And of course also because I have here a cute little ball end mill and my idea is to install the part a little bit in an angle so I can cut with my pinky here a zigzag pattern in here to retain oil. Let's do! All installed, total depth of cut, not much. So, let's do. Let's see what we've got here. That's good. The thing doesn't need more. Because my milling work wasn't perfect, I'm working the bottom surface here a little bit with a file. Because, for I don't know what reason, between the V surface and this surface on the other side, there is a little bit a twist. This is a one tenth of a millimeter feeler gauge. This side doesn't end. This side, I can slide it in and it starts to bind uh, maybe uh, 2 inches, uh, 50 millimeters about, starts to bind. This one is 0 0.06 millimeter and it's 0 0.0025 inches because it's uh, about here otherwise uh, I don't know so very very thin thing and this one I can go about here before the middle it starts to bind so my filing work is getting better and what I do oh, it's heavy stuff I make it black with my sharpie and then I slide a little bit and then I can see where it touches. And now that we're talking about this primitive act of hand filing, let me give you something to think about. When we're working on the lathe, several times we use this kind of inserts. And after some time they don't cut anymore. So what do we do? We 
change on the shaper most of the time we use high speed steel and after some time it doesn't cut anymore so what do we do we grind it and of course the same with drill bits when they don't cut anymore we grind and after some time we see that the grinding stones they don't grind anymore so what do we do we dress same story on the belt sander after some times this belt wear out and they don't cut anymore so what do we do put a new one same with milling cutters when they don't cut anymore we change or we regrind but don't drag your file backwards otherwise it's gonna wear right in the meanwhile I managed to get the rock out of it so now this thing doesn't move anymore but the main problem still exists I really don't get it and let me explain what I don't get if this represents the bed of the lathe right and the other side is of course a flat with also and here comes the hook form idea clamp yeah, with the bolts no problem if I put the saddle in place the saddle of course comes here on top and this surface leans on this surface so by gravity automatically it will center itself right because normally these two surfaces are straight the surfaces of this thing here are straight I suppose there can't be any rocking because I checked between here there is free space here is nothing that touches and I don't know I gave the thing a little touch with my sharpie and then slide it on the bed of the lathe again and here you can see that it touches only in the middle so indeed there should be some kind of light bow in it with my parallel or with something else straight I can't feel it so it's really not much but the total gives me more than one tenth of a millimeter movement so now I don't know but I think it will be for next video or another video because first I have to think about this one